I'm at Jenny Lake right now. I just finished this long two hour drive from my grandparents' house. Um, very pretty. And now I'm about to start a 35 mile hike called the Grand Teton Loop. Late night all trail searches can really do you in at times. And that's what has happened today for me, I think. We'll see, it might be a good day. I was supposed to do the Teton Crest Trail today, but I needed a shuttle. Dave didn't want to shuttle me. I told him he could be on Let's Zoom again, but even that didn't sway him any, so. I have a vivid memory of me a couple days ago at home in my room about to leave looking at my shelf wondering if there's anything else that I needed to pack. And my eyes fell upon the can of bear spray that hasn't been used and that I've had since Gannett Peak last year, which you can watch if you click right up there or there. I sat there for about five or 10 seconds thinking, do I need it? Nah, I'll be good. And walked out. I'm not necessarily regretting that decision, but it's definitely making me more paranoid about 12 miles moving pretty well I got out of a family reunion to do this so I'm super happy about that scenery is gorgeous you got the grand middle and south um, and great people just having a really good time and the best part is not having to go to a family reunion Just left Hurricane Pass, and holy smokes, guys, you cannot beat this. Look at these wild flowers behind me, man. Holy. And not only that, but I am on my way to this beautiful turquoise lake out in the distance. This is awesome. <laughs> Okay, so after that, that was the last clip that I actually filmed for the whole trip. The reason is because I started to feel really sick. It's not unusual for me to feel sick on hikes. I do that quite often actually. What is unusual for me to do is to stop filming. The pass after Hurricane Pass, I don't know what pass it's called, I'll put the name up here. It was hard, um, at that point I started to really get nauseous. Um, started to cramp up a bit and the heat was getting to me. It was probably high 80s. And during this trip, I was super, super mindful about what I was putting into my body. And so the food I was eating, the water I was consuming, I mean, I was trying to really stay on top of it because I didn't want another repeat of Half Dome, um, which at that point, I think we're three weeks removed or so from that um, at the time that I filmed the, the episode. And so, um, I was, it was still fresh in my mind and I did not want to repeat that in any way, shape or form. 
And continuing down the trail, um, it started to just get worse and worse and worse. I was just laying on the ground. Um, there was a point shortly after the Ranger Cabin in Death Canyon, so probably about three and a half miles from the Death Canyon trailhead, um, where I saw some water and I decided I'm gonna soak my ankles um, and change my socks. After just a couple minutes of, of relaxing, um, I threw up about seven times straight into the water. Shortly after puking, I had to get, get to the shore because my whole body was cramping, just like Half Dome. So I, I had to stretch out and by myself, just kind of work through the cramps and the uncomfortable uh, pain that was going all the way through my body. Um, and that lasted for probably half an hour or so. It was really, really violent shaking and just, uh, I couldn't really control what I was doing. So I, at this point I called my mom and dad who were on vacation with me. Um, they were on, they were at a family reunion. And so I, I called them, I was like, hey, like, would you be able to meet me at the Death Canyon Trailhead? I don't think I'm gonna be able to get back to Jenny Lake. Um, I never do this. This is a last resort of last resorts. I do not want to call my parents because at that point I'm admitting, yeah, I kind of screwed up um, and I should have been a little bit more careful and more mindful or there was something that I didn't do that I could have done to prevent now them being inconvenienced and having to come two hours out of their way to come get me. After a few miles, uh, probably about two miles, um, I got a call from the Grand Teton Search and Rescue and they were in contact with me from my mom um, and they decided, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna send someone up to meet you. Uh, I said, okay, cool, and talked to them a little bit. And at this time I saw a bear, rolled a clip. It's a bear. I, it scared me so bad, I walked right in front of it on the trail. Holy smokes. I stay at my distance, but I have to document it. Wow. And that was pretty intense. Um, I was on the phone with Search and Rescue at the time of this, the bear, I mean, we were literally five feet away on the trail and I just wasn't paying attention. I was already pretty out of it anyway. So the bear comes right there. Luckily he had no interest in me and just bounded off. A few minutes after that, uh, a little bit further down the trail, I decided, hey, you know, um, I really need to just take a little, take a little breather. Um, I was starting to feel lightheaded and they said that in your condition, you could definitely uh, experience some dizziness, maybe even pass out. So if you start to feel that way at all, make sure you sit down, maybe even lie down so you don't bash your head on a rock or something. I was laying down, I was super weak, trying to call out Hey Bear, but I, I knew I wasn't loud enough to really make any difference. So I started to play music on my phone as loud as I could. Um, here's a little clip of me singing a German song with the lyrics, Mir geht's nicht wirklich gut, which means I'm not doing very well, <laughs> which, uh, kind of describe my situation at the time. A few minutes later, I started to hear some rustling in the, in the bushes and um, started to get really panicky. I was trying to yell, hey bear, but you know, it was more of a croak at this point. Um, and there was no one that was around me. So I kept hearing that getting a little closer, a little closer. And at one point I heard it and it couldn't have been more than a few feet away from me. A branch just broke um, and I shot up and grabbed my stuff and did a sprint. Wasn't much of a sprint, I don't think, but as fast as I could go in the opposite direction, heading down the trail. Um, and I looked behind me and yeah, it was another bear. And I don't know why it didn't want to chase me because I was running. Um, but it, luckily it didn't because he could have had me if he wanted to. Um, I was not in any way going to outrun him, that's for sure. I quickly discovered the consequences of me jumping up and, and running away as fast as I could go. And that was more puking, um, which was really disappointing because I had been working hard to put back some more calories in my system from the last time I puked. Um, here's a video of me doing all that. Um, viewer discretion is advised.
Where are you, Gideon? And at this point, um, I, there wasn't much I could do. I, I lay down and waited for the, the ranger to come. Luckily, he came. His name is Zach. Zach is actually friends with Jonah and Kobe in Yosemite, so we had that little connection, um, which was really cool. But yeah, he helped me try to move and walk down the trail. I, I couldn't go. Um, it was a no-go. And so he did what, after about two hours of nursing me, uh, nurse trying to nurse me back to health on the trail, he actually called for a litter um, and had me uh, carried out, carried out um, the last two miles or so. From there, I was transported to an ambulance and taken to Jackson Hole, uh, to St. John's Medical uh, in Jackson, Wyoming. Um, I was treated there um, and they diagnosed me with, I don't know the right word, the right term. It's like rabo something. Um, I'm not gonna try and mispronounce it, but it's right up here, bing. Um, so, Anyways, that's essentially kidney failure, um, where the, some of the protein that your muscles release under uh, severe exertion, it's put into your bloodstream and then your kidney starts to break down because it can't break it down. So, um, and already, I already have kidney issues. My left kidney is more of a half kidney. It doesn't really work. So it was a really serious situation. Uh, I stayed the night. Uh, my dad, Dave, who you've seen on the channel a couple times, he was there with me. He stayed the night with me and uh, I got lots of IV fluid. I think I put down eight liters worth of IV fluid, which means I was severely dehydrated, which I couldn't even fathom because I had put down probably three or four liters on the trail, um, which felt felt sufficient. And I never, I never felt super thirsty. I never had the cotton mouth. Um, I did have lots of salt on my face, but like I say, I was putting down salt as fast as I could, could swallow, essentially. So um, I'm not really sure what happened. Um, and to be quite, to be quite frank, I, the doctors don't either. Um, but the reason why we haven't been posting a lot is because I've been um, restricted. I can't go hiking. Um, the doctor in Jackson told me I have to wait two months. This was filmed on August 2nd, so. That would mean beginning of October is when I could, could hike again. I have a, a checkup appointment with my urologist on Wednesday. So in two days, um, the 28th, I'm filming this on the 26th. I don't know exactly what day it'll come out, probably on the 28th. Um, and I'll be able to um, say for sure whether or not I can get back to hiking. Um, we do have lots of plans this, uh, this fall. Um, so stay tuned for those. Also stay tuned for our national park rankings, which are going to come out um, sometime this next week as well. Um, it's Gideon and I breaking down objectively the national parks that we've been to in the Western United States. Thanks for watching. Hopefully um, we'll get back to some episodes in the next couple weeks. Stay tuned for some of the fall plans that we have. We've got some cool trips lined up. Let's zoom.